information contained in the Nove November 2011 IAEA report regarding the possible m military dimension of Iran's nuclear program and Iran's lack of cooperation with the IAEA leave little doubt that Iran aims to become at least a nuclear threshold state. A threshold state is defined uh, here as a state that has the capability to produce more than one nuclear weapon within less than one year, from a decision to, to do so, of course. The Iranian regime has devoted ample resources to the nuclear program over a period of more than 25 years. Today, this program is too advanced to reasonably hope that any future government in Iran would be willing to, or even could, for internal political reasons, abandon the components which have been declared, no matter the level of sanctions. What could possibly change is the tactic used by the Iranians' leadership to minimize the level and impact of sanctions, while most likely maintaining the option to restart weaponization activities at short notice. Against this background, the P5 plus one, with the support of other key stakeholders, such as Turkey, should explore how Iran and the international community might realistically cooperate to find a mutually beneficial end to this almost decade-long standoff. In case these efforts fail, it is also necessary to explore what could dissuade Iran from taking the decision to actually manufacture nuclear weapons, withdraw from the NPT, and test a nuclear weapon as North Korea did in 2006. It is likely that if Iran becomes a de facto nuclear threshold state, other countries in the region will be inclined to launch extensive nuclear programs to reach a similar status, which to a large extent can be achieved without violating the IEA safeguards agreement. It is reasonable to fear that the Middle East, where several countries have become nuclear threshold states, would be extremely unstable. So what can be done to avoid this precarious order from becoming a reality? For any negotiation to succeed, the outcome must be perceived to be a win-win solution for both parties. And the two sides of the table must be willing to negotiate simu simultaneously and in good faith. Because these conditions apparently were not met in the past, there have been a number of missed opportunities to make progress in resolving the Iranian nuclear crisis. Is there any hope that they can be met in the future, in the near future? If Iran's nuclear activities are exclusively for peaceful purposes, as some people believe, the answer should be positive. If they are not exclusively, exclusively for peaceful purposes, the answer is more doubtful, but should not preclude stakeholders from engaging once more in diplomatic dialogue. Before negotiations with Iran begin, I think it is essential that an agreement is reached among the P5 plus one hopefully with the support of other major stakeholders such as Turkey, on what they will offer to Iran and what would be the consequences if Iran further escalates the nuclear crisis. <coughs> the cooperation proposal made to Iran by the P5 and the EU in June 2008 is made conditional inter alia upon suspension of Iran's enrichment-related activities. Let's not delude ourselves. If in 2003 it was still possible to hope that Iran would suspend its uranium enrichment related activities in exchange for credible security and economic benefits, this is no longer the case today. Such a condition is most likely not included in the Russian two-page memo sent last summer to Iran, and which I haven't seen. The first major goal in solving Iran's nuclear impasse is for the IAEA to be able to draw the so-called broad conclusion 
that there are no undeclared nuclear material and activities in Iran, and that its declaration to the IA are correct and complete. To reach such a conclusion, within a reasonable period of time, Iran would have to conclude with the IA and fully implement what I have called a temporary complementary protocol, or TCP, which would avoid uh, a number of loopholes and limitations of the additional protocol. A TCP, in essence, should enable the agency to verify and evaluate in a timely manner the absence of undeclared nuclear material and equipment and activities in a state that is found to be in non-compliance with its safeguards agreement. In case Iran agrees to fully implement a TCP, the IA Board of Governors should commit to accord Iran a grace period during, during which Iran would not be penalized should it voluntarily disclose the existence of still undeclared nuclear material and activities or acknowledge any past violation of the NPT or of its safeguards agreement. On the contrary, Iran would be praised for its cooperation with the IAEA and its additional breaches would be reported to the UN Security Council for information purposes only, as had been the case uh, for Libya. Without such a grace period, there is no reason to expect that Iran would fully cooperate with the IAEA or voluntarily declare any past violation. Until the IAEA has drawn the broad conclusion, Iran should commit to send abroad its domestic stockpile of low enriched uranium every six months for incorporation in fabricated fuel assemblies for the Boucher reactor or possibly other light water reactors while continuing to enrich below 5% U-235. It would, it would also be important that Iran concludes an MCX-66 type safeguards agreement for all its fuel cycle facilities and such an agreement doesn't lapse contrary to comprehensive safeguards agreement if the state withdraws from the NPT. As long as Iran does not suspend its enrichment related activities or the IAEA does not reach the broad conclusion, it cannot be envisaged that the Security Council would lift present sanction. However, as soon and as long as Iran agrees to implement the TCP, the P5 plus one could commit to not implement additional sanctions and the US and the EU could commit to progressively suspend sanctions going beyond those decided by the Security Council in function of progress reported by the IEA. In parallel, the P5 plus one would negotiate with Iran over how best to further define expand and implement the long-term cooperation agreement specified in Annex 4 of Security Council Resolution 1929. Once the IA has reached the broad conclusion, Iran would no longer be obliged to export its domestic production of low enriched uranium and Security Council sanctions would progressively be lifted. The approach suggested here will not succeed if Iran's aim is indeed to become a nuclear threshold or weapon state and continues to ignore IEA boards of governors demands and defy legally binding UN Security Council resolution. To dissuade Iran from escalating the tension, the Security Council should adopt a resolution under chapter seven, deciding, not affirming, deciding that if Iran were to produce high enriched uranium, separate plutonium, or notify its withdrawal from the NPT before the IEA is able to draw the broad conclusion of the exclusively peaceful nature of its nuclear program, a number of well-defined additional sanctions would automatically be applicable and implemented. Similar measure would be adopted if Iran were found after the grace period to be proceeding with nuclear weaponization activities or to divert nuclear material. The merit of such an approach would be to make Iran clearly responsible for any negative consequences of its own decisions, knowing in advance that it cannot use negotiation as a tactic for creating disunity among the permanent members of the Security Council. It 
could help those in Iran who are not determined to reach a nuclear weapons capability at all cost make a more compelling case to follow a different course. On the other hand, any significant opening or concession made by Iran during the negotiations could be praised in particular by the media and qualified as a demonstration of self-confidence of the regime and not as a sign that Iran is backing down under international sanctions. The direction of Iran's nuclear program is grim but not decided. The international community should act now to use all diplomatic means to persuade Iran that it is in its best interest to fully cooperate with the IA and to dissuade Iran from withdrawing from the NPT and manufacturing and testing nuclear weapons in Tehran.